Today, let's talk about safety. Shop safety. If you work in the shop for any period of time, you really should be considering proper safety gear, whether it is hearing protection, a mask for the fumes in the air for whatever you might be working with, maybe you're painting, maybe you're laser cutting, and also your eyes. The main topic for today is actually talking about the safety of diode lasers. Diode lasers are very different compared to their close cousin, which is the CO2 laser, because CO2 units are typically enclosed, at least all the ones that I've seen, where you have an enclosed system that manages the airflow, hopefully exhausting out any harmful fumes, and hopefully some sort of plexiglass, specialized plexiglass, that will filter out any of the harmful rays from the lasers. But most diode lasers actually do not have that setup. They tend to be open air lasers, at least that's what I typically call them. And it's that setup that actually turns a lot of people off from those units. And understandably so. They don't have any specialized system for evacuating the fumes, so that, that goes right into the air. And also the reflection of that laser light can be pretty intimidating, as it should be, because it could potentially cause damage to your eyes. Hey, Dad. I don't know where the exposure time is that is needed to cause that damage, but it's not something I want to experiment and find out. Now, the other additional thing is safety, not just for you in the shop, but anybody else around. So for instance, in my shop, I have my laser working, I have it running, but I have a family that sometimes goes in and out of my workspace. And unless I catch them right at the door coming into the workspace and tell them the laser's on, sometimes they're walking into a situation and they don't know that laser light is reflecting around. Ah! Now I could go and buy a full family set and make sure they wear these anytime they come to the garage, but that's not very practical and that's typically not how I want to operate in my household. So instead, you can find an enclosure for that laser. Now a lot of people have made their own and built their own and they look great. They look fantastic and it looks like they work really well. But maybe you don't want to build your own. Maybe you want a solution that was built for your specific application. And that's where this comes in. This is the X-Tool portable enclosure that is made for their line of diode lasers, whether it is the X-Tool D1 or the X-Tool D1 Pro that has been released. This specific enclosure is meant to be portable and collapsible because you may not want to use it for all applications while you are engraving and cutting. But according to X-Tool, it is made from flame retardant material. It is almost kind of a fabric that has a little bit of a plastic feeling on the outside. I don't know what this specific material is, the plastic viewing area at the top has a specialized material to filter out most of the blue laser beams, but their documentation even says that it filters out most, so it may not be perfect, but it does make the area a lot safer to be in without always having to have the glasses on. The enclosure came in a pretty small box, completely flat packed. It only took about five minutes to put together. It feels like it's made out of pretty quality material, especially for something that is made to set up pretty quickly and then tear down, flat pack, and store when needed. All the sides attach to each other with a pretty durable Velcro. And it looks like you could take it apart and pull it apart without it wearing out too much. It is made to be portable, so it is a little bit less rigid than what some people might like. And it does increase the footprint of your work area quite a bit. Um, the enclosure itself is a little bit taller than you might expect, but that is built in that way so that you can still use your rotary setup and your extension feet within the same unit without having to take it out and be exposing it to the laser. So that option is pretty nice. The front of the case closes with a flap that has two magnets in the front that kind of hold it down during operation. And on the inside of the case, it has two simple straps with buttons that will hold it open while you work inside and then easily close it back down. The enclosure also comes with an exhaust fan. The exhaust fan looks like a pretty basic and simple exhaust fan, very similar to what you might find on a computer, but it does move air out of the unit pretty effectively. I'm not gonna say that it is a great fan or one that you should permanently use. I have a silent exhaust fan that I'll be swapping out eventually for use with the unit. I probably won't use the one that came with the machine, but at least it did come with one. And it does air and it's better than not having anything at all. Just a quick note. The exhaust fan and the hose that it comes with is great. I'm glad that it does. I actually like the hose. It is almost a vinyl type material, which I honestly don't know if that's good or bad based on different factors in a shop. I'm sure that all of you could comment and let me know whether or not that should be switched out to a aluminum hose or something along those lines. It's not knowledge that I have. So I'm opening that up to everybody to kind of comment and let me know and we can discuss it from there. But at least the hose feels somewhat durable and 
and so on. The one point I want to make about the exhaust hose and the fan is that it is smaller than most of the standard exhaust hoses that fit on a typical CO2 laser, which is what I already have around the shop. So to use it with my pre-existing exhaust fan, I'm probably gonna need an adapter, which is not a big deal. Just kind of know that ahead of time, um, it will not be completely compatible with those other systems if you already have those in place. If not, then you can just kind of build it out from here. The hose is not incredibly long. I think it's only about a six foot hose. I need something a little bit longer for my shop, so I'll be moving things around and making it work for my space, which that's typically what we do in our shops anyways. The enclosure has some front openings for the USB cable and power and any other accessories you might need to have access to. That way you can access it through the outside of the enclosure. You don't necessarily have to open it to possibly do whatever it is that you need to do. There's also another port on the back. This is typically a power cord port. They'll fit through there and it has like a rubber gasket on it to kind of keep it secure and snug right in there. On the other side of the enclosure, there is a vent down here, so when the exhaust fan is pulling air out, it can also allow other air in and keep a constant flow through the unit, which is what's needed in something like this. And we have an extra strap right here that you use just to store things that you're going to use on a regular basis. And you can even put your hanger glasses right there, screwdriver, a small little convenience thing that covers the main construction of the enclosure and some of the small features. But now let's go ahead and put in our laser and see it in action. When the laser's in the enclosure, the smoke is completely minimized and even the sound is muffled quite a bit. And this is kind of what it sounds like. A little bit of a humming of the fan, but that's really about it. And of course you could peer in, take a look at the progress of your engrave or cut and stay relatively safe from the harmful rays of the laser. <laughs> On the other hand, without the enclosure, there is a lot of smoke in the air when cutting and or engraving. I can't quite tell if the camera's able to pick it up, but the garage is filling up with quite a bit of smoke, even though I have two doors open and there is some airflow. And of course, there's nothing blocking the light from the laser, so that is something you have to be aware of as well. And I want to make sure I set expectations a little bit because the enclosure itself is really not altering the way the laser works in terms of the quality of the cut or the engrave. That pretty much stays consistent. If you want to see a review of this laser, you can find that review in this video right here for the X-Tool D1 because it is a really good laser. The only thing that would actually start to make a little bit of a difference aside from evacuating some of the smoke, which might end up on some of your piece a little bit, is an air assist. And that will actually have a more direct impact on the cleanliness of your cut and the appearance of the piece without being stained with kind of like soot. Couple quick notes, not everything is perfect. So a couple things that I noticed just for you to be aware of. It is a portable enclosure. It goes together with Velcro. So there are some seams that will leak some air. But also remember that no laser system should be completely airtight. There's gonna be some air leaks some places. And that's partially intentional because there needs to be a certain airflow through the machine to pull air in and evacuate the smoke out but it's not sealed up perfectly. You still have some gaps at the seams. So there's that. Another quick note is that if you take it apart and put it together a lot for storage or just you don't have a permanent spot to leave it, the Velcro and some of the material could potentially wear out. So just keep that in mind in the future. So in terms of price, at the recording of this video, the enclosure is selling for $179.99 on Xtool site. I have a link down below. If you purchase from that link, it will help out the channel. But ultimately, I want you to get whatever it is that you need to improve the quality of your shop. If you want to see a review of the X-Tool D1, you can find that in a previous video I made right here. If you're already an owner of the X-Tool D1 and you've purchased the extension kit, this enclosure will not currently work. I think they have a solution coming for that as well. But as far as I know for right now, this will not accommodate the enclosure. In fact, this enclosure just perfectly fits the D1 stock as of right now. But if you are looking for a laser, aside from my review of the x D1, there's an x D1 Pro out right now that is a really, really good machine. I don't have one to review, but you can find other people's reviews online. But once again, if you'd like to help support the channel, I have a link for that machine below as well. So the final wrap up. If you made it this far in the video, thank you. It means a lot that you've watched this long. It really helps with the channel and your support is greatly appreciated. Like I said before, if you're interested in one of these enclosures or even the laser itself, 
I do have links down below that will help with the channel and hopefully get you what you need and want for your shop. I have a lot of other videos in my back catalog. Go ahead and check those out. I think you'll find something else that you like and enjoy. If you're in a position to do so and are interested in supporting the channel, I have a Patreon with different level rewards and some cool giveaways potentially coming up. I might even be giving away a laser, so stay tuned for some of that info. I don't have it finalized yet, but I'm still working on it. I will let you know once that is definite and in the books. I also have a website, geekbuilders.net, where you can find some more info, write-ups on some of the projects, and also a merchandise store with shirts and other maker-themed merchandise for you to check out and enjoy and wear proudly. Once again, thank you. Don't forget to design, make, and play, and I'll see you in the next video.